Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to get started. All right. So I am Jessica Schlee. I'm a girl program coordinator with Girl Scouts Western Pennsylvania. And today I have my brother, John. Um, John is my twin brother. Um, John is going to be assisting us with our bike safety today um, and maintenance of our bikes. Uh, John has been riding um, a bike for many years, including um, racing. So he's done this um, here in the United States, um, many states, as well as many different countries. He also is on a bike team, and John even won first place in the Girl Scout Duathlon in 2015. So today we're going to get started on just some general things for biking um, and what kind of things you should be um, keeping track of while you're on a bike. So um, did you know that May is uh, Bike Safety Month? So biking is fun. You already know that, right? So, but some other things you need to remember is that biking is... Um, a good way to get around the community and is good for our environment. So today, I'd like for some of you to tell us where you're from in the chat log. You could tell us your first name, um, anything you'd like to tell us about yourself. John and I are coming from Mars, Pennsylvania. Where are you coming from? Hello, everyone. John says hi. Awesome. So this is um, biking in Western Pennsylvania. Um, today is a good day to be biking. Some of you may be coming from other states um, and the weather might be a little different. New Jersey. Hi from New Jersey. Okay, so let's get started. So some things you should have with you today um, are, are just the essential things. So you might have a bike with you or might you might not, which is okay. We're just going to show you some things to remember. Um, for when you do go on a bike trip or just a bike ride. So today, um, if you have a water bottle um, with you, a first aid kit, um, a, um, maybe a quick snack and a backpack. So that's all you really need for, for today. Hi, Sophie. Hi, Isabel. Hope everyone's having a good day. All right, so we're gonna get started. Um, and the first thing we need to do is we need to discover, we need to discover what are the parts of our bikes that we need to keep maintenance going and make sure that it's working correctly while we go on our bike rides, right? So um, John's gonna show us behind me, I hope you can see him. Can everyone see him? All right, so some of the things you need to um, remember for your bike is we are going to first we're going to make sure that our tires are um, inflated so what do you why do you think your tires need to be inflated John why do you think our tires need to be inflated so it's, it's a really great idea to have uh, your tires inflated for several reasons. And, and you want to make sure that you use a bicycle pump before every ride to ensure that your tires are inflated to the right air pressure. Um, on the side of your tires, you'll actually have um, indentations that indicate what the pressure um, will need to be. And the reason why is because if your tires are underinflated, you won't actually get enough grip um, on the, the road and you possibly could be at risk for an accident. Um, conversely, if your tires are overinflated, you actually could have also just as many problems as gripping um, the actual, actual road as well. If your tires are too um, inflated and it's wet, your tires won't be able to grip the, the pavement as necessary and you could be at risk for crashing. So, it's important to, to make sure that you, you pump or inflate your tires before every ride. Um, you know, normally before I ride my bike, um, I make sure that the designated pressure is followed uh, before every single ride. So I'm ensuring that each and every ride will be safe based on the, the tire pressure that is um, allotted for my particular bicycle that I'm riding. 
So if you don't know what your tire pressure is, a great um, resource would be an adult who can help you inflate your tires. Um, so um, a lot of times you might need an adult for this part, um, but you might use a tire pump to pump your tires up to the right pressure. And John's just gonna show us briefly um, what a tire pump looks like. So this is a standard tire pump that you would keep maybe in your, in your parents' garage or you would see at a park or at a bike shop. And to Jessica's point, um, the tire pump actually has a gauge for it, which will, once you engage this end of the pump onto the tire, it will actually show you what your tire pressure is um, in your tire at that particular point in time. Now, um, I don't have one today, but um, if you're going on a long bicycle ride, it's also uh, maybe a great idea to carry a handheld pump with you. Um, that way, if you do um, lose some tire pressure or you actually may have a flat tire, um, you're able to you know, pull off to the side of the road safely and pump that tire back up. Um, a couple of other things that you could do um, for more advanced riders, um, if you get into longer bike rides, you could also carry a patch kit or an extra tube that you could insert when um, you ride your bike. But um, generally that's for more, you know, longer rides, advanced rides, uh, but a way to, you know, fix your bicycle if you um, have a flat tire because you ran over a rock or ran over a nail uh, or something like that. Great. So we've had some great um, responses in our, um, question, our chat log today that um, lots of people love bike riding. Um, you could fall if your, um, your, two, your tires weren't at the right pressure. Correct. Um, so that is some good things. Now you can always pause our video today and if you um, want to do something that John's showing you or you need to run to the bathroom or do anything like that, you can pause us and watch us, um, you know, on. Or you can check out our, our YouTube page afterwards to check up anything that you might forget. Um, okay, so um, next thing that we might need to check on our bikes could be our brakes. Our brakes are super important um, for many reasons. And John, why do we need to make sure our brakes are functioning? So um, first off there, you know, depending on the bicycle you have, there are many different types of brakes. Um, one is that most bicycles for younger children will have brakes where you actually push the pedal backwards. So the reverse uh, movement of what you would do to normally pedal a bike. Um, and then other more advanced bikes as you become older might have um, brake levers uh, so something something like this, where it, if you depress the brake lever, it will actually stop your front or back tire. Um, it's important to, um, when you're riding a bicycle, especially if you are starting to pick up see, speed, have your hands close to the brakes in the event that um, you have to make a sudden stop or you have to slow down because an object is in the road. Um, the other important thing is once you get older, a lot of bikes will actually have a left brake or a front brake and a right brake, which is your back brake. Um, in these situations, it's really important to understand how to use those brakes. So if you do get a new bicycle that has both a left and a right brake or a front and a back brake, um, try it out on a nice flat surface before you would go down or up any hills to ensure that you safely know how to use each of the brakes. Um, the reason why is, um, and I can actually give you an example of uh, a scenario that I had when I was in Ireland mountain biking a couple of years ago, but um, if you utilize the front brake before the back, back brake and you're going at pretty high speed, your bike will actually flip this way and you could actually go over the handlebars. So you always want to make sure that you engage your back brake first and then once you engage your back brake, you can start to engage your left or your front brake. Um, just to give you a quick story, when I was in Ireland mountain biking a couple of years ago, um, I actually didn't test the brakes out um, and realized that the brakes in Ireland are actually opposite of what they hear, here, are here in the United States. And you know, when I was going through my mountain bike ride in the mountains of Ireland, I actually hit the left brake um, before the right brake thinking that it was, um, I'm sorry, 
hit the right brake before the left brake, thinking that it was the back brake when it in fact was the front brake. So I myself actually went over the handlebars and ended up uh, breaking my arm. So just, and I've been riding bikes for, you know, 30 years um, and ride at a very high level. And this is just something that, you know, you should check before every ride. So absolutely important to make sure that your brakes are functional and you know how to operate those brakes. Um, and I would, you know, ask your parents, ask someone at a local bike shop when you get your bicycle to show you how to use those brakes, brake, excuse me, properly. Also, another reason why later in our um, Facebook Live here, why, why we, we should have a um, first aid kit with us in case you have an injury like John did in Ireland. Um, okay, his injury was a little bit more than um, he could handle on his own, but he um, did take care of himself. Okay, so um, what kind of things do you think you need to make sure you're... Um, um, you yourself should um, be safe with while you're riding your bike. So I'm just going to give you a quick second to tell us an answer or think about it, and then we're going to touch base about it. So to keep yourself safe while you're riding your bike. Hmm? Um, so how do you get your badge? Many people are asking that. Um, you will find information how to get your badge in the question log. Um, we have some friends at Girl Scouts that will be answering your questions. Correct, you're gonna wear a helmet. So the first thing Mr. John is gonna show us about a helmet or how to make sure you are wearing a properly fit helmet. Okay, so um, one, it's important that you wear a helmet no matter when or where you are riding your bicycle. Um, even if it's just in your driveway, even if it's at a very low speed. Um, when I go biking with my son who's eight years old, I obviously go at a much lower speed than I normally would ride, but I make sure that I'm wearing a helmet as well. Um, and one of the important reasons why is that you have no idea when something will run out in front of you on the road, um, when you know an object will appear and you know you might hit it and then bump off of your bike. But um, it's also important to make sure that your helmet isn't cracked. So you know when you if you actually have a helmet that you're given to from someone else, just have your parents or yourself inspect it before it's you know to make sure it's not cracked. But one of the most important um, things to understand is outside of always wearing a helmet, make sure the helmet fits properly. And when we put a helmet on, we first want to make sure that it's not sitting like this or sitting like this or sitting like this, because if I crash or if I fall off my bike like this, I have all of this area exposed here. If my helmet is like this, I have all of this area exposed here. So the helmet is designed to sit on top of your head with about two fingers above your eyebrows. Now, the second point, point is that you want to make sure that your strap on your helmet is always tight. If it's not tight and if it's loose, your helmet could actually fly off when you may fall off of your bike. So there are straps here um, that you can loosen or tighten your helmet to make sure it's properly fit. Now some helmets also have an adjustment in the back to make sure that the inside of the helmet conforms or fits to you know, the base of your head. On the side, you'll see that there are straps that form a Y, right? So you wanna make sure that this Y sits underneath your ear and that your helmet straps aren't dangling when you are um, riding. Other, if they are dangling, that means I'm not that. Sure I understand. One second, let me loosen it for you to give you an example. So, if my helmet is like this, and my strap is way beneath my chin, and I crash, my helmet is going to move around. See how easily it moves around? Now, if I tighten it, it won't move around as easily. So, be sure, one, to always wear a helmet. And two, make sure that your helmet fits properly.
All right. Yes, we have lots of people that have told telling us that we should wear um, a helmet. Um, also, that we should wear sneakers. Why should we wear sneakers, John? So you always should wear sneakers because if you think about it, one, you shouldn't wear something like flip flops or something with open toe shoes because if your if your foot is on top of the pedal and your your toes are out here, your toes could actually hit the ground and then you could actually really injure your um, your toes. The other thing is if you're wearing flip flops or loosely fit shoes, those shoes could fall off and actually get caught in the back of your wheel and then will um, actually make you uh, fall on your bicycle. So be sure to absolutely wear shoes that are um, not open toed, not flip flops. Make sure you you have tennis shoes that are tied. The reason why you have to make sure your tennis shoes are tired, tied because if you look at my bike here, I have a chain. A chain is what will make the bike move when I pedal. If your shoes are untied and your um, shoelace gets caught in that chain, you will crash. Um, and it will actually rip your shoe off and you'll really hurt your, your leg and you know, your, probably your, your toes and, and your foot as well. Uh, okay, John, we had a question um, about someone's um, chin strap that it was like, how tight should it be? Should there, is there a way they could tell if they should loosen it or tighten it? So the, you basically want to have, if you take the width of your fingers, no more than the width of your fingers um, in between your chin and the strap. So if you don't want it to be too tight where it would cause irritation to your skin or obviously choke you, but just so there's enough room to fit your, your, your two fingers in there without having to um, you know, really stuff them in there. And that allows for a little bit of play in your helmet once, you know, when you move your head and so the strap isn't, you know, cutting through your skin, but also is tight enough to ensure that uh, the helmet is fit properly. Okay, awesome, thank you. What about um, clothes? So lots of um, girls in here, or friends in here said that we should wear um, tight fitting clothes, um, neon clothes. Can you tell us examples of what kind of clothes we should wear when we're riding our bikes? Yeah, so I think um, those of you girls that, that mentioned um, those types of clothes, you're absolutely right. Um, one is just like your shoelaces, your, if you have pants um, that are you know, very baggy at the bottom, they just like your shoelaces could get caught in the chain, in the pedal or in the wheel. Um, so you want to make sure that that your pants are you know tight or tighter or you're wearing shorts um, during your ride. Uh, the second point is you know especially if you're riding at night, you want to make sure that you have clothes that are very bright, right? So you have cars that might be on that road and using that road at the same time. Um, make sure that you're wearing some sort of neon type shirt or even a vest that lights up. Um, the other thing, if you are riding at night, make sure that your bike has lights. Um, so my bike actually has a, a backlight, and then when I ride in the mornings or ride at night, I will put a headlight on it as well. In most cases, I ride my bike, bike during the daylight hours because it's obviously safer, um, but I also make sure that I wear, um, you know, if I'm riding in the morning or riding in the evening, wear a vest or some sort of, of neon clothing. So other cyclists, other bike riders, motorcycles, pedestrians, and vehicles can actually see um, me when I'm riding. Okay, so what about shorts? Can I wear shorts when I'm riding my bike? Yeah, so you can actually absolutely wear shorts. Um, you know, just like anything else, um, I would make sure that those shorts aren't too loose um, because they could get caught you know, in your, in your wheel. Um, but in most cases, shorts are actually per, the preferred option over pants because shorts have less of a risk to actually get caught into any of your bike, um, you know, parts that would be spinning around. Okay. So I think, um, one other item that, um, we have for, um, a tire would be like gloves or pads. Um, that girls have mentioned, um, but these aren't always needed, right? No, so I, I always wear, when I ride, um, I always wear gloves. 
Um, there are several types of gloves that you can wear. These are actually full fingered uh, gloves that would fit over my entire hand, just like a winter glove, but they're much lighter. Um, the reason why you know you might want to wear gloves is one that it allows for a more comfortable ride if you're riding for longer distances um, when you're holding on to your handlebars and actually gives you a little bit more grip if maybe your hands become moist or damp from sweating. Um, the second thing is that, in, and in most cases, as you become more advanced um, with your biking, is it's important to, to wear gloves because if you fall, it actually will help to protect your hands if you slide across any type of surface which could scratch or scrape uh, uh, your hands. So um, not always necessary, but absolutely a good idea to, to use them. Um, when you, um, knee pads, elbow pads, you know, I, I would say that's up to your own discretion. Um, it's probably not as common as someone maybe rollerblading roller skating or skateboarding um, but you know it's it's up you know I think it is wise to consider wearing knee pads or elbow pads um, you know when you are riding your bike as well how about <clears throat> how often should I replace my helmet so great question I think the the first part is one if you ever crash and um, you hit your head you should replace your helmet um, and the reason why is because you don't know that there was any damage done to that helmet that would uh, prevent you from having some sort of benefit from that helmet in the future. Uh, the second thing is if that helmet starts to, you know, set differently on your head where, you know, it's too tight, sits way up here, those straps now, you know, go to your ear and not below your ear that's when it is absolutely important to, to wear or change uh, your helmet. Thank you. Okay, so um, now that we are, um, we are safe to get onto our bike, we have to figure out how we have to keep our bike safe. So what kind of things um, do we need to make sure that our bike is safe to go out onto the road? We talked about our tires. What other things should we make sure we're um, checking on our bikes before we take it out? So it's important to, to one, make sure that, um, like I always will spin my wheels just to make sure that they aren't rubbing against the brakes. If they are rubbing against the brakes, that could impact the way your bike will steer. I also, if you can see here, the chain on the bike, I also make sure that that chain is properly lubricated um, or oiled to make sure that um, the bike and the chain will actually work in the correct way. Um, the other thing that I do is make sure that that chain um, does not have anything in it that would prevent it from spinning. Um, otherwise, you know, similar to your shoelace or a piece of clothing getting caught in your chain, um, it could impact your, your, uh, your pedals from actually being able to turn. Um, and then, you know, you know, I think overall though, the most important thing is that for each ride that you take, especially a longer ride, be sure to check over your tires to make sure that they're inflated at the right pressure. Be sure to make sure your brakes are functioning properly. Be sure to make, um, make sure that your um, chain has nothing caught in it to you know, prevent your tires from spinning. Um, so those are definitely the big things that should be checked before every ride. Okay. Um, and how should we store our bikes? Uh, so it's, it's best to store your bikes inside of, of a garage um, or inside of, you know, a structure that would prevent it from, from actually, you know, getting wet. And the reason why is because when your bike gets wet, it could start to impact the performance or how well the bike functions or works. So if your bike gets wet, the chain could actually get very rusty. Um, and it won't be able to spin when you when you pedal the bike. Um, your brakes could actually get uh, wet and the, the brakes might not be able to grab uh, the tires when you depress those brakes to try to, to stop. So where and when you can, you should always try uh, to keep your bike inside or under some sort of covering to, to avoid it from getting wet. Uh, the other thing that you should do is try not to let your bike sit on the ground 
Um, many bikes have kickstands. Some bikes actually don't have kickstands. For bikes that do have kickstands, make sure you utilize those kickstands. When your bike is on the ground, it obviously has uh, the potential to, to maybe get run over by something, to get stepped on by someone, and it actually has the ability to collect, collect a lot of dirt and dust. Um, a lot of dirt and dust inside of your chain could actually impact how well the bike works. Uh, for those bikes that do not have a kickstand, I would recommend making sure that you keep that bike leaning against the wall or some sort of structure underneath uh, a tarp or something like that, um, as someone mentioned, um, would, would be wise for sure. What should we do if your bike gets wet? Uh, if your bike gets wet, um, it's okay, right? Because I actually took a bike ride um, over the weekend and it it rained uh, for nearly the entire bike ride. Um, what I did as soon as I was finished is I just made sure I wiped the bike down um, and then I actually put more oil or grease on the chain um, to allow it to function properly. If you let that water um, settle in any of the areas or collect in any of the areas on the bike, it will absolutely um, you know, maybe start to make your bike rust and impact how well that bike works in the future. All right, so um, how do I, um, well first I wanna mention that we do wanna make sure we're riding our bikes safely. So we do need to keep both hands on our handlebars um, when we're riding our bikes, um, just for safety purposes. But how do I make sure that I'm riding a size bike that's appropriate for how tall or short I am? So um, it, it's absolutely important to make sure that a bike fits you, just like a helmet. Um, and there are many reasons why. If you're riding a bike that's too big for you, um, you might not be able to handle that bike properly, which puts you at risk for crashing that bike or having an accident with it. Um, if you have a bike that's maybe too small for you, you might not be able to pedal it properly and then also be at risk for an accident. So um, while you know, many of us might have bikes passed down from you know, generation to generation or a bigger brother or bigger sister, um, you have the ability to, in most cases, lower the seat, raise the seat to allow that bike to, to sit properly. Now, in most cases, when, um, if you're able to see me, in most cases, you should be able to, when you're standing over the bike, um, you, ha you should have some um, space between your legs and this top tube. Um, that way, you know, when you, when you actually sit up on the bike, you should be able to reach the ground with your tippy toes, right? Um, if the bike is too big and I can't reach it with my tippy toes, I'm going to be at risk um, for crashing. So it's important when, you know, you buy your bike or your parents give you a bike, um, just make sure that you feel comfortable on that bike when you, um, when you first try to ride it um, and it fits you properly. Um, in some cases, if the seat is too high, seat is too low, and you're pedaling for a longer period of time, you might start to develop some soreness in your legs. You might st start to develop some soreness in your back because maybe you're reaching too far or maybe you're reaching you know, not enough. Or when you're pedaling your bike, your legs might be really overextending themselves. So, um, you know, it's every bike is different, though, at the same time. So... Um, if, if any of you know what geometry is from, from your math uh, class, your bike, each bike has a different geometry or shape in the way it's measured. And that geometry, um, you know, will need to be understood before actually getting on the bike to see if it fits you. Um, so, and that's why, you know, if you can, you know, go to your local, local bike shop or, you know, ask your parents to help you or ask a friend to help you um, understand if, you know, your seat might be at the right height, um, your pedals, um, you know, aren't, you're not reaching too much on your pedals, and you're not struggling too much to keep it or gain control of your bike when riding it. Okay, um, there was one question I saw that I wanted to check. Okay, um, we're gonna move on to, let me move my camera back to where we can see us. Okay, so um, I'm glad you guys know some geometry. 
Um, we threw some school in there for you today. Okay, so we, I think we're ready to go out on the street, do you think? So um, we're not gonna go out on the street today, but we're gonna show you some safety things. We did have some questions um, prior to this about what do you do when you go through an intersection? So John is gonna talk to us about what kind of things we should do when we're actually on the road. So when we're on, um, when we might um, go past an intersection or through an intersection, what side of the road we should be on. So Mr. John's gonna tell us a little bit about what you should do while you're on the road. So um, one, it's, it's absolutely important to, to understand that when you are on the road with your bike, you should actually obey the same laws as any motor vehicle that would be on the road. So you have the same rights on a bicycle as I do if I'm driving a car behind you. Um, so it's important to understand that. Now, the second thing is to, important to understand is those roads will have cars, trucks, motorcycles on them. So you need to be sure that um, you follow the, follow the understanding that they will be riding or they could be riding or sharing the road with you at the same time. Um, that being said, um, we should be riding our bikes if you're out on a road with traffic on the same side as a vehicle or motor vehicle would, which would be the right side of the road. Um, in Pennsylvania, where we are, you actually have, um, it's a law that a motor vehicle has to give you four feet of space between yourself when you're riding your bike and the car when they're passing you. And you should not be any more than two, um, two side by side when you, when you are riding your bike. So if you have two or three people, make sure that, you know, that third person is, is actually behind you. Um, when you, Understanding that you have to follow the same laws that motor vehicles do, it's important to obey things like stop signs, yield signs, red lights, yellow lights, green lights. So if you see a red light, um, but you do not see any traffic coming from either direction, you actually still have to stop at that red light or at that stop sign, just as any motor vehicle would as well. Um, the second thing is that if you are making any turns, um, right, left, it's important to use hand signals to ensure that the vehicles or pedestrians or maybe other cyclists or bike riders behind you actually know or understand which way you're going. Um, unlike uh, motor vehicles like cars and trucks, most bikes don't have turn signals. So we actually have to use our hands or hand signals to indicate uh, which way we are turning. So I'll show you uh, right now, um, which way, um, and it might be backwards, I'm thinking, because of the camera, but I'll actually show you on the, on the bike, if I'm coming to a stop, what hand signal you would use, if I'm making a left turn, which hand signal I can use, and making a right turn, which hand signal I should use. And you can practice this at home while John is showing us, um, and you always use your... So you always use your left hand. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. I gotta get you to the. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so you you always use your your left hand. If you're making a left turn, you simply put your hand out to the left. If you're making a right turn, you can actually use your right hand, but um, the actual recommendation is to use your left hand and make an L. So that indicates that you are turning right. If you're stopping, you simply put your hand out, your palm out like this, to indicate that, that you are stopping. So left turn, left hand out, right turn, an L with your left hand. If you're stopping, put your palm back, and that way a car or biker behind you knows that you are stopping. We got that you guys understand how we use our signaling when we're riding our bikes right so hopefully you can remember that whenever you're out riding your bike um okay so i think the last thing we're going to talk about before you're ready to venture out is what kind of things should we take on our bike ride so if we're going on a short ride 
um, or a long ride, there's different things we should take out with us. Um, so I recommend that you have some kind of backpack, which we have laying on the floor here. So just a small string backpack, just like, you know, that you might take to day camp. Oh, someone's asking us to repeat the hand signals. Okay, so if, if you are turning, if you are turning left, you stick your left hand out. Move this way. Nope, that way. Okay. If you're turning left, stick your left hand out and point to the left. If you're turning right, you use that same left hand, but you use an L. And this indicates that you're turning right. If you want to show someone that you're stopping, you put your hand behind you, open your fingers and palms, to show that you're stopping or slowing down. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, John. So um, in our bag, so we have some great answers on, on our, um, in our chat log. So some of the things that um, we mentioned are a water bottle. Why should we take a water bottle with us? So it's good to take a water bottle, um, you know, especially if it's going to be warm outside when you ride your bike, especially if you exert or, you know, release a lot of energy, you're going to start to sweat, get tired. So it's important to make sure that you're hydrated, especially if you're, you're in the sun or, or, or on a very warm day. All right. Um, we talked about the first aid kit a little bit ago because Mr. John had a accident. Um, so it's just um, nice to take one with you. This one's a little bit larger than you might need while you're riding your bike, but something like this could work. Just a little bag that, you know, you could put um, band-aids or, um, you know, some um, antiseptic um, in case you get a little brush burn or something. Um, a snack. Why should we take a snack? So a snack, just like your water bottle, if it's a warm day or if it's a day where, you know, you're going to take a longer bike ride and you need to make sure that you have energy, um, make sure that you, you have a snack with you. Um, I like to do a lot of bike rides. Some bike rides I do are, you know, 60, 70, 80, even 100 miles. Um, in those cases, I I'll, I'll almost always will pack like a lunch, like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I might have a granola bar or, you know, some sort of trail mix that I'll take with me um, and, you know, try to, to eat with you on, on those longer bike rides. Okay, so those are the essential things. But what if I was a, taking a bike ride and I'm a big biker, what kind of other things should I take with me in case I get a flat tire or in case I um, need to check on my bike or I need to leave my bike somewhere? Um, while I'm eating my lunch? So, um, you know, first and foremost, it's, you know, it's, it's always wise to, to maybe have your bike with a lock. Um, so you could lock your bike up, um, you know, um, against the railing. If you're going to be sitting, um, sitting there eating your lunch. Um, I like to uh, carry a tube um, with a, an actual tool, a small toolkit that I carry in a pouch on each and every one of, of my bike rides. Um, now I will say this is a little more advanced, uh, you know, once you become more um, used to biking or biking longer distances where you would need to carry something like this. Um, this, this thing here is actually what we call a CO2 cartridge. This CO2 cartridge actually, if I get a flat tire and have to put a new tube in it, it allows me to pump that uh, tire up to make sure that I can continue riding. However, as we talked about earlier, um, it might be good just to maybe take a hand pump, which we, we don't have with us today, put that into, into your backpack. Um, and that way, if you do develop a flat tire, you can you know, ensure that you're able to pump it up. Um, one thing that, you know, when you're using a, a backpack, when you're riding your bicycle, just like um, you would your clothing or your shoelaces, make sure that you don't have any straps hanging too far down behind you so that these straps could get caught in, in your wheels or in your brakes, which, which actually could put you at risk for, for crashing your bike. Um, okay, great. Um, so um, we had some questions about what kind of food are good foods to take on a bike. So I recommend like a granola bar or a trail mix. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's um, one, you want to take something that uh, tastes good, right? Um, you want to take something that doesn't have a lot of salt in it. So maybe if you think about something like peanuts, um, which has a lot of salt, that salt could actually make you sweat more um, and make you become dehydrated. So things that will actually give you uh, energy quickly, such as, um, you know, maybe even Swedish fish, red Swedish fish, because they'll, they have sugar in them. That sugar is able to be converted into energy. Um, trail mix is something that's good because it has a mix of, of proteins and sugars that um, can give you immediate energy and give you energy that will, will last a, a long time. Um, for people like myself, um, I actually, they actually sell at some of the sporting goods stores, they sell gels um, that are basically like 100% sugar and, you know, will give you, you energy um, if you're on like a longer bike ride, like a 40 or 50, 50 mile bike ride. But um, for most people's purposes, I would just take something, one, that can be packed and stored easily that won't melt. So things like chocolate bars and you know peanut butter bars aren't always a good idea because they could melt in your backpack. Um, so things like goldfish, um, trail mix, granola bars are really good things to, to use. Great. All right. So the last thing we need to talk about is um, that you are ready to go out on your bike ride. So just a few things that you need to keep in mind when you're leaving to go on a bike ride is that you should always plan your route before you're going and you should always either take an adult with you or tell an adult where you're going. Some of you might have a cell phone with you um, or some kind of watch, but we should just make sure that we're um, following those um, when we leave our household so someone knows where we're at. So um, I'd like to also let you know that um, you can, um, the Get Outdoor Challenge, you can complete two different outdoor challenges um, by riding your bike. Number 16 is just ride your bike. And number 50 is go on an evening stroll with your neighborhood in your neighborhood with your family. So um, now that you have completed the bike safety patch, you're ready to go out on a bike ride. Um, John, anything else you'd like to share about biking? Uh, I would say, you know, when, when you're riding your bike, the, the most important thing is to, to make sure that you're safe. Uh, make sure when you're riding, you're riding at a speed that's comfortable for you. Um, but also be mindful that um, it's a way to, to really enjoy yourself and, and get a ton of exercise at the same time. Um, many people use bikes for different reasons. So people use bikes for work. They use bikes to deliver packages. They use bikes to get to work. Um, people race bikes like myself. You uh, or your friends might just simply um, use it as a way to you know, get around your neighborhood and get outside and enjoy some time with your friends. But um, the most important thing on any bike because it moves at speed is to, to respect the bicycle and to make sure that, that you're using it um, safely. All right, <clears throat> so um, thank you all for joining us today um, for our bike safety patch. You can look in the comments for how to um, purchase the patch. And I thank Mr. John for joining us and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Thank you, have a great day everyone. Bye everyone.